Hello, everyone. Welcome to Crucible Radio. This week's episode is brought to you by our new podcast, The Old School, where we only discuss computer games that came pre-installed on Windows computers. That's right. If you were really good at that one pinball game that was sort of set in space and you just clicked Z and the uh, arrow buttons, that's on the list. That's one of the main games we talk about. We'll also divulge into some of the ones that came with the CD-ROMs, like Descent. Remember Descent? Actually, I, I, I do. Sw- Swain, I feel like that is kind of not on brand with our uh, our whole what? podcast thing. It's okay. I'll talk that. about Chips Challenge. Chips Challenge came on my on my PC. Oh, fancy you! Um, I'm talking about that one uh, pipes game where all the pipes uh, cover the screen, and if you move the mouse, they go away. I, I was shit. really good at the snake game. Okay, guys, here's the the big question, though. Free Cell or Spider Solitaire? You know what? No, we'll save it for the first episode, which you can get online on the internet. Go find it. When I I woke up one morning, I was like, ah, shit, I'm back. And then I just, like, took a quick walk around the block to kind of, like, refresh myself and came home. And it was, like, kind of chilly out. I came home drenched in sweat, and it's like, ah, I'm still, I'm still bouncing back. Gross, I know. Being sick is gross. I'm doing okay. Thank you for asking. Swain, how are you doing? No, wait, no. Uh, Bones, Swain's I already know. fine. I already know. Who's, who's <laughs> fine? I do this every week. See, I, must, I know. I think I'm going to jog it up to being sick. That's how it works. You just said you weren't. Well, I'm still, <laughs> I'm getting over it. I'm on the tail end. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm He's fine. still in the, the section of being sick where you can blame everything. <laughs> yes. On. Thank okay. you, Swain. You truly understand what it's all about. Bonesy, how are you? I am actually doing really, really great. And uh, yeah. look, you're listening to Crucible Radio, the podcast for all things Destiny P V P. And if you've never heard of it, what we do is we tell you that you're going to die soon. So stop <laughs> bitching about the game and get good. <laughs> yeah. Your existence is uh, short compared to the lifespan of the world. Fill the void in your heart. <laughs> you know is there because of your impending doom and fill it with. Uh, improvement and growth mentality in the crucible. Anyways, what's going on <laughs> in the Destiny world this week? Oh, well, we got a little bit of a uh, twab. And when I say a little bit of a twab, I mean oh my God. <laughs> uh, another um, hint at future changes. We've got a number, though, which is good. We like those numbers where they say 2.5.0.2. Mid-Feb. I'm a big fan of mid So I'm going to go with... February 15th. What's a Tuesday in February? That's probably the best bet here. Patch going up. Uh, it's probably going to come out when, when I'm on vacation. 14th. Oh. That's, that's my that's my bet. Isn't that Valentine's Day? Yeah, man. Because so, so obviously us. we're not playing Destiny that day. Right, uh, guys? My wife, uh, oh, she, uh, she's get, <laughs> my wife, she's got me uh, going to Valentine's Day. <laughs> The, the old, old Mrs. Valentine's Swain, Day real stickler, <laughs> real stickler for celebrating Valentine's Day <laughs> on the day. No questions. That's true. Oh, okay, so yes, but what were we talking about this patch? Uh, it's coming. They like it. Uh, they say never a perfect meta. Never met a perfect meta. Oh, I didn't even realize that was like wordplay. Yeah, wordplay. No, I I feel like um, this was not a patch hint. I think that there's some uh, some fairly concrete stuff here. I also also want to point out that this, I think, is the first patch led by the returning Josh Hamrick. Josh yeah, I actually uh, perked up when I saw his name in the list there. Yeah, he uh, he put something out on Twitter too, saying that like he hopes everybody enjoys it. A lot of work went into it, and uh, it's good to see him back. Well, I haven't played it yet, but uh, I hate it, and uh, <laughs> what? I, I no longer trust anything you say. Look, no. this game is stale, but if you take away my favorite weapons, I'm going to lose my mind. Lose my mind. Um, all right. No, we've got, uh, we've got some new design goals more than just, uh, you know, fulfill the contract of each weapon. Let's, uh, l- l- let's take a second to, uh, to have a look at some of these. Yeah. Number one, promote alternatives and counters to shotguns. Oh, Boob Nation! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it's been hard at work at the research lab. Fusion rifle is getting a buff. Buff fusion rifles, please. <laughs> hey, make them better. No, no bungo, please, on this show. There's a key uh, key wording on this little note: promote alternatives and counters to shotguns. That doesn't really mean reduce strength of shotguns. I think 
the last uh, the last message that Cosmo had put out there from the guys that they had posted on the forums was saying, hey, we really want to work out how to how to fix this, uh, fix one weapon group from dominating without just saying drop the hammer on that weapon group. And it seems yep. like they've stuck well, to that philosophy, which is really good to hear. The thing with that is, even if they like mess with uh, the econ- like the economy when it comes to what you get from a special crate or whatnot, at the highest tiers of gameplay, shotguns, no matter what happens to them, will be decent in the right hands. Yes. Yeah. As there long will, as people uh, yeah. move into close quarters without the a movement close quarters in this weapon. game is, is very, very high. And you end up with these very quick you know, uh, charges like Juggernaut. You'll probably still see Juggernaut uh, charging Titans. Uh, you just might have a better chance at them. So, uh, learn. Uh, if anything, if I can give any advice, is learn some movement skills to get away from shotguns a little bit better. That way, when they are, you know, changed in the meta a little bit, uh, you'll be even better at it. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, in a perfect world, set up in a position that doesn't really put you in a tight space. You know, don't back yourself into a corner if you can avoid it. Obviously, you got to go with Look the flow of the game already and go get kills. But bailing uh, Bungo out of a situation. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, I, I think yeah. we, can, we can unpack this one a little bit. So there's really two goals here. So the first is to promote alternatives to shotguns. So snipers, fusion, sidearms. I... When you say you're going to promote the alternative, that seems like give some kind of buff to to these things, whether it's changing the way they work, giving you more ammo, or you know, tweaking the archetypes a little bit. Um, the one that I find interesting is promote counters to shotguns. Um, and this is interesting because there are counters to shotguns today, right? Like if, you know, Swain, like you say, like just some movement abilities like being able to backpedal and create negative space is sort of the fundamental counter to a charging shotgun. Um, what do you, what do you do in a sandbox to make that more of a viable tactic? Like if you've ever tried to, you know, like pulse down a shotgun user as they're coming at you, that can be tricky. Something like the last word on the other hand is sort of the more quintessential, you know, shotgun backpedal counter. Where Um, I could say it would be, Probably sidearms, man. They feel like they almost always feel like the last words kind of abilities. Sidearms mm-hmm. kind of like nailing down people really quick as long as you get your shots in. Yes. Um, I feel like they really want to promote sidearms here um, simply because, you know, they're pretty interesting guns and I don't think they get a lot of use as of right now. And even going back to last week's show when I was talking about uh, Ninja with Noel, I was watching him the other night. Playing with Mita and a sidearm in trials. That was that was just, stupid. Destroying <laughs> kids like, and this goes uh, to saying like top tier players will be able to use whatever right. and do well with it. But like it, it was crazy to see that at that level, like you can just like mop up uh, other skill players, like even with a sidearm. So yeah. I, you know, well, I would like to see that. It, it's also inspiring to see good players do that. Like when someone picks up a sidearm and really, really does well. You know, I, I think like uh, Grenader Jake does a lot of ch- challenges and trials using different loadouts. And you can see that and go, okay, that is not a meta weapon, so to speak. I'm not giving myself a huge advantage by equipping it. In fact, it's a disadvantage. But if someone can make it work, that means with a little tweaking, it can be a gun that eventually feels good in everyone's hands. And it's not just this like totally broken, do not use it. It gives me like hope for every type of gun, if that makes the sense. Real, the real problem will be encouraging people because the meta happens simply because there's like almost like hive mind happening where everyone is talking about or using a certain thing or seeing a certain thing in the crucible in the kill feed or looking up and what did I get killed by? Sure. Uh, that tends to be like, that, that's like, that's thinking about the mental side of this, but, um, a lot of people just tend to go with what they hear, like on this show, on other shows. Oh, I got killed by a matador. Oh, they need the nerf matador. Oh, that ends up saying like, oh, I need a matador. When every stream is saying quest for the perfect the god roll matador or every YouTube <laughs> yeah. video is, yeah. oh, just got this god tier shotgun. 
um, people are going to tend to move towards that. So if sidearms do get fit, like uh, buffed, if fusion rifles do get buffed, if things get moved around to promote other counters, it's kind of up to us as you know community leaders to kind of push it. You know, if it is if it's really working and it's very effective, uh, mm-hmm. we're going to need to be the ones that say say that say so. I I always have to remind people for my own sanity and my own uh, humbleness to go back and listen to that episode where News came on and made fun of me <laughs> for saying that the doctrine of passing sucked. Auto rifles were still crap, and I was literally at the time using. Oh my god, I was using the gun that became a dominant force. Like, it was in its good state right there. I had used it and said, you know what, I don't like this. It's just because I wasn't used to stuff. So it's good. I'm, I'm hoping there's more of that. I hope that there's a scenario where we have to sort of test out enough things and eventually someone's going to go, hey, everyone use this. I mean, hey, definitely. Remember when we all liked Ambush Scope? Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It doesn't have Ambush on it. The sniping days of year one. I... I Swain, you had mentioned sidearms, and I would love to see a sidearm meta develop. I mean, and we were kind of told like 2017 is the year of sidearms, kind of thinking about the idea of the contract. I guess I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be using a sidearm right now. I've seen people use them to great effect, but to just have a story like, hey, if you've got good aim and you you know, you you, you like to play slow or you you like to work angles, then sidearm is the the counter for you to to being pushed with a shotgun i don't think we have a real clear narrative like that that would cause your average player to pick up a sidearm and use it um yeah we'll we'll, we'll see who who shall be my sidearm hero we should start picking them up with the vendors now yep they're yeah. not gonna, Level them they're up. gonna be sold out <laughs> yeah well, spend your moats now all right next up Goal number two. Oh, that was one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Align potency of primary weapons with surgical changes. Ooh. Surgical is the key word here, huh? That's a very interesting word. They're just going to turn turn the knob next to primaries up like 2%. <laughs> I like the idea of bungee panels being like just three knobs. And there's just <laughs> massive knobs. And one is primaries, one is secondaries, and one is heavies. <laughs> And they've just been like, whoops. It's actually like the reason the shotgun meta came up was that someone was having coffee and they leaned on the They leaned on the knob. And they didn't notice it, but they slid secondaries like way up. They're like, oh boy. Shucks. But that's not what this means. Clearly, it's a stupid thing I said. (laughs) But potency of primary weapons, if we're just taking that little phrase, it has been a hot button issue. On the Twitters, on the Reddit, quite a bit in the streams, uh, buff primaries, and you know, a sensible person can can see the the arguments there and also say like, well, that's complicated, so we can't just crank everything up and have another year one thorn scenario. But you know, they're talking about potency of primary, so maybe that's kind of way that, where they are headed. I don't know. Oh, I think it kind of relates to the first one. They, if they promote counters to shotguns and promote something as an alternative to that, uh, you're looking at not really needing to change primaries too much, uh, just a little bit. Uh, and I think surgical is the right word for it. Kind of turn the knobs, turn all the tiny little knobs that are under the big knob, um, and get it just right. Because right now. Uh, we've, we've said before that there's a there's a di- definite variety in the crucible when it comes to uh, primaries. I've I've seen Mida's work. I've seen you know everybody's seen the clever dragon and Is Luna palindrome and you know not the, even last word but not too many exotics, which is kind of cool. Like it's nice seeing a lot of legendary uh, hand cannons in the meta, uh, but turning the dial a little bit. And very precisely, uh, might just encourage that a little bit more. Yeah, I, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm quoting Keen here who'd mentioned this today. Um, the, the idea of surgical changes kind of suggests that th- there may be a focus on specific archetypes instead of sort of primaries as a whole. And I, I think I, I agree that that's kind of my expectation because, you know, if you've ever, you know, 
a doctor of passion to a shotgun pushing at you. It's, you know, it's, it's not an unfair fight. You have a chance there. Same thing if you're using, you know, a palindrome and you've got good aim. Um, try and do that with uh, a high impact auto rifle. It is very challenging or a low impact scout rifle. You just don't really stand a chance. Granted, you're not really using those weapons in their sort of sweet spot, but I would expect to see some of those lesser used archetypes that, yeah, we're asking to use them out of their ranges, but being pushed with a shotgun when you're out of special ammo is something that happens to everyone. So maybe a little bit more forgiveness, a little bit more flexibility there outside of sort of the the dominant weapon archetypes. Because if you're if you're rocking that vendor palindrome and you don't know what to do when a shotgunner is, you know, sprinting towards you, yeah, just making those bullets hit harder is, yeah. is not the fix. Yeah. Auto rifles <laughs> auto rifles definitely have been a good um I, I feel like a lot of the complaints come from not lower skill players, but like casual, ca- more casual players. And as far as their the effectiveness of their primaries, not auto rifles are definitely that you know, put it in your hands and just spray bullets in a direction kind of uh, good feeling primary. And we're not seeing a lot of them right now. And who knows? That could be the next thing. Back to back to the doctor. <laughs> It'd be kind of nice if like full circle before the sequel that like a high impact auto rifle was just damn good in the crucible. <laughs> Obviously not where it was. Uh, but that'd be that'd be just kind like, of fuck it, turn it up. Like oh. change it up here. <laughs> Seriously, if I could use a Vanquisher and a Found Verdict and Gallahorn and Crucible, like I <laughs> like I used to in 2014, that'd be just so fun. All right, thanks, Grandpa. Um, I back I will in say, my day, you know, reading aligning potency of primary weapons sounds like it could be a lot of things, but I have to assume in one way or another it is a faster time to kill. And having played a lot of other games recently with with faster time to kills. I'd be interested to see what that's like. I mean, I do remember year one where, you know, a two headshot thorn was guaranteed kill at any armor level. Some people didn't like that. It certainly can be frustrating, but uh, if we're seeing a shift back in that direction, that that's not an unwelcome change for me. Mm -hmm. All right. Goal number three, file down a couple of issues from each class. Okay. So massive (laughs) rework of subclasses. (laughs) <laughs> yep, well, they're gonna Clearly. reassign the colors of each of the elements. Your Nova Bomb is now, is green. now green. I'm sorry, <laughs> and it's also like a soccer ball sized, like it was in the uh, beta. <laughs> what I'm thinking is, Anna came out and she was a support class, and then they added Sombra. <laughs> but there's like a lot of defensive characters, so I think Doomfist is coming as the tank in the next. Oh, whoa, whoa, oh, this sorry. is I'm the wrong sorry. podcast. Bonesy, but... Not funny. Not okay. <laughs> not okay. Uh, you talk about destiny, you son of a bitch. There, I mean, this is this is a definite one to read into. Class can mean literally anything. Can be class of weapons, class of you know uh, subclasses, all that. But I do it think be it is going subclass. to school and taking classes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> file down a couple of issues from your economics class. Okay. The, um, um, your 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 SRL driver's license class. Anyway, I think I think. We, oh, it'd be nice to see a little bit of tuning on those, uh, just for the sake of shaking it up. Like if we could just shake up what everybody uses right now, that like would breathe some sort of life into uh, what people use, what people explore. Like just finding new play, like play styles, loadouts, all that. Never meta, perfect meta. See the wording of this. File down a couple of issues makes it sound like. They're not necessarily trying to shake things up. They're in there to fix things that are not correct. That's probably why we haven't seen too many subclass tunings lately, because they are kind of in a decent spot. Yeah, but have you also ever seen anyone use that gunslinger swarm grenade, like, ever? Yes, yes but they were one very... time. It was so weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't know what to do, and I died. <laughs> I uh, I was a uh, a guy threw one of those I saw it the other day threw one of those into the 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 suicide on um on rusted lands and there was no one in there and I thought like all right I guess that's going to be the thing that keeps me out of suicide 
Uh, <laughs> I, that and like thermites on Sunbreakers. Like I saw that on Last Exit in like the the middle room, the tea room, and I was just like, wait, what? Uh, and I just stood in it and died. <laughs> okay, there you go. Throw my bone. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> this is all right. Th- this is fine. I'm just standing there in the, the fire. <laughs> Can we talk about number four? Okay, we'll talk about number four. Fix some issues with the sampler platter of exotics. So when I read this one, I was like, okay, maybe that means they'll take some exotic weapons and make some of them a little better or more viable. That to me was like, very cool. And I realized... Next mythic class, bring it back, please. <laughs> Well, trying to look at how many exotic weapons there are now, there's so many. How many are there, Bones? There's enough to say that if we can't quite use all primaries, then using like a hundred exotics and having them all be somehow viable is very difficult. So I think there's uh, going to be phases of exotics just like there are with the weapon classes they fall in. But... There have been quite a few that I just wish were a tad better, especially mm-hmm. now that ornaments are out and I'm getting all of them finally since they added that kiosk. And I'm like, I got my gold Monte Carlo. I've got my Arctic Mida, finally, my Spec Ops, and I got my Trespasser and all those. And then like Red Death, two of the dopest ornaments. Like I really like both of those, but it's not ideal in the Crucible. I'm not going to take it into trials. So I think it'd be cool if I could just, you know, put on some of those cool ornaments and and play with those and, and have, just, I don't know, a, a new sample platter, like they say. I, th- I think there's about 50 exotics. That's, give That's crazy. Here. That's so many. Um, I, I just kind of People are through. like, I some want all of, of my stuff in, in Destiny 2. That's <laughs> so much. All right. I, I went to Bungie Armory and looked at exotic primaries, and it's giving me 409 results. But there's a lot of duplicates well, if you just go to weapons and sort by exotic, it shows 74 results. Some of them are year one weapons, like doubled up. So there's a couple of like, there's Thunderlord year one and Thunder year, year Lord three and whatnot in here. So so I I would like to, I mean, I think one of the thing that's, things that's changed, like thinking back to the last time there was really dominant exotics in the primary position was, of course, the last word in the thorn. <clears throat> and the idea of using a legendary there was just laughable, not because they were terrible guns, but because the exotics just consistently outweighed them as options, just universally better, did more damage, more mm-hmm. reliable. Um, I cannot remember the last time I saw somebody using Bad Juju, and Bad Juju is oh. a great gun. That is a tragedy. Yes. It's unfortunate this the situation's kind of flipped now, which is that Bad Juju is not a bad gun, but when it comes to pulse rifles, there are just significantly better options now. Same thing with Red Death. Like, Red Death, granted, it's not the archetype to be sort of flavor of the week right now, but Red Death should be a viable choice for a certain play style. And right now, you know, its exotic perk just doesn't really seem to... It doesn't have the rest of the perks around it to support building a play style around that exotic perk, which is you know, kind of what you should be doing with an exotic. It's not a regular all-purpose gun. It's some one-of-a-kind weird thing that, mm-hmm. you know, I, I bones you to your point, like Monte Carlo. God, we all want to pull out our Monte Carlos, but again, for auto rifles, they're just better choices. Goes without saying that's the case for hand cannons. Might is still dope, but... Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would, you know, I don't envy them trying to give these exotics a a little bit of a tweak to make them a little bit more viable without pushing them into the point of domination because that's a real fine line. And e- even if you do it just right, people might perceive it as being dominant and start using them exclusively. But I would love to see it. I would love to see that choice be as viable as, you know, we hope every gun is. It's funny that you bring that up because I feel like when it's an exotic, it's just another gun that is good. And sometimes some guns have been very good, but I feel like exotics having those personalities is uh, (laughs) the bad things that it did stick with them so much more. Like there's Matador and everyone's angry at Matador and it's just like, oh, stupid Matador. But like poor Thorn, which is like just just a hand cannon now that has a fun little perk is still just like vehemently 
said with disgust. So if you make an exotic <laughs> weapon become the most powerful, the people will use it and they'll love it, but then they were they will remember it forever and they will not forgive it. <laughs> but that's kind of cool. It's part of the lore. I could probably, if I went and streamed right now and put on Thorn, there would be one person that would come <laughs> in and be like, ew, Thorn. Like, what? No, it's not even that good anymore. Come on, give it a break. <laughs> Boy. Number five. Supporting adjustments to special ammunition. Bonesy, I know you got some thoughts on this. I have uh, very few. I have thought about it a lot, but I don't have much to say, at least as of now. Supporting adjustments to special ammunition. Whew, that one almost worries me because, you know, a lot of people say, like, if you just take, oh, take less special ammo, then there's less shotguns. It's like, yeah, literally, but, you know, starving <laughs> something out isn't my favorite fix to a problem. Um, well, I mean, maybe that's the solution we need right now. Um, so that you like, but not the solution we deserve. Yeah. Like feeling starved is just a symptom of spending a lot of time using that special, uh, weapon and you end up putting too much importance in that green crate. Like, Oh, you know, if the, if mm-hmm. everyone had less, it would be a point where you'd just be like, all right, well, I'm just going to go back to my primary and try and get kills with this because you know, that, that's, you know, that's promoting primary usage. And it's not a bad thing. It's your primary. <laughs> Here, I'm going to go against the grain on this. I will say something. Yes. I think that... Ouch, my grain. <laughs> no, I think <laughs> special ammo should be easier to get. And should at least be on par in terms of inventory and efficiency wise with shotguns now. And I'm saying this with the belief that there will be balance changes that either make you pick other special weapons and maybe make you a little more confident in your primary. So I'm saying this with the idea that someone is a little more equipped to handle a someone who decides I'd never have to equip my primary because that. That doesn't make sense. We don't want the game played. No one wants the game played where someone just uses their secondary. So with that concept in mind, I think guns, especially snipers, um, should get more special ammunition because if you go into Clash 6v6, um, in Trials, it's very easy if you really, really want to 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 manage your special ammo. I mean, it's a, a crucial part. But in 6v6... You can be out of sniper ammo so fast before that first like nine minute crate drop or whenever the special starts spawning up and then you pick it up and you get four and it's like, God hope I make it to the other box on Widow's Court and wow, I'm really loving my life if I make it to a third special box before they're all gone or I've died and it's despawned or whatever because you're just starved as a sniper and you miss more shots and those, that ammo just goes faster. Whereas like a shotgun is incredibly efficient with its ammo. It's like you're almost always doing damage if you're at least aiming and you're close enough. Uh, so it's efficient. You're getting kills, you're making progress, you're getting points. But I can, I can get like 25 rounds on my Matador or like at least 20. And it's just like, wow, I, I'm fine. I can run around for the rest of the game. And I think the reason I say that and the reason I want more is because no matter how strong a primary could get, Destiny feels really good when I'm landing a headshot with a sniper or I'm juking someone with a shotgun and I'm baiting out a jug titan and I jump over him and shoot him in the top of the head or I'm flying around punching people and stuff like that feels good. And it's, sometimes it's great to get like a big triple kill with a Mita from the Mohawk on Bannerfall and you're like, yeah, eat my primary. That's fun. But it's not that like visceral like, oh, God, that felt good. And I don't want to take away those really feel good moments of the Crucible. And I think special ammo has a huge part in the feel good things. Oh, yeah. Fusion rifling someone to death is one of the most satisfying things you can do, voop, voop. especially when it's from really far away. Um but yeah, I think, you know, I can get on board with that. Uh, do you think maybe less for shotguns if you are increasing the other ones? Uh, I, I don't know if it would hurt them too much if it was if you lost like four or five rounds in total inventory. They have a lot, but yeah. it, it like crushes me to have 14 on a on a longbow. Like I have great longbows and I'm like, I, I want got all the best longbows. Than- I've got all the best longbows, but I just want more ammo for that thing so that I can 
you know, not be a deficiency for most of the game compared to the other people. Four getting four for one crate does seem like I don't know, disheartening. You get it, it and you're like, oh, yep. Yeah, I want the challenge of going up against someone with a pulse rifle and a shotgun. If I have last word and sniper, I'm fine with that matchup. Like, I want the challenge of trying to beat them with my special versus theirs. But I don't want that challenge to mean that there's way more opportunities to for them to use their special versus me to use my special. If that makes sense. It does. Give me the green. The lack of other special weapons uh, might just simply be that. The lack of special ammo for those weapons. I I think it it plays a huge a huge part, a huge part. But that's just me. I don't know. I you know as long as kind of like you say, <laughs> they preserve that special ammo metagame where you are rewarded for controlling crates and you still have to work to get them. You can't ignore them entirely, and that you can you can play that game regardless of what type of special ammo or special weapon you're carrying. Yeah, uh, that, that's like certainly the, the better team manages ammo and controls the map and says, no, you can't get this. But I just don't want the guy who's trying to snipe be like, I'm so fucking bummed because I got no special box <laughs> and the rest of this game is going to be brutal. That's what I want to avoid. Ah, uh, OK, well, those are the goals. And, you know, we stretched that into some conversation, but I think it's good to get a little bit of this on the air before the patch. And that way we can really actually just dig into what feels good and what's interesting to us when it does drop and all of this sort of, um, you know, just talking about philosophy and stuff is kind of already, already out there in our minds as it gets closer. Yeah. And it's good to re, you know, bring up some of the stuff that we've talked with them about before to kind of get a little bit of an insight into what they could possibly be doing. Uh, yeah, for this yeah. upcoming change. Because, I mean, we do have the benefit of having talked to them before. Yeah, and it's really kind of fun seeing this kind of come together after after so long, after so many different different metas to, to wonder what could possibly come next. But I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be nice to have some change. And I think that's, that's the thing to keep in mind is like, we're going to get some patch notes. They're going to be doing things that we didn't expect. They're not going to be doing things that we have expected. I think the one thing that's clear is that, look, there's clearly been a lot of time, a lot of thinking going into this one. I'm I'm prepared to see something a little unexpected, and I'm prepared to have like some, oh, huh, moments kind of figuring this stuff out. Um, who, who knows what this patch is going to bring, but this certainly is not going to be a rushed one. Yes. One of the other things that's coming up, uh, an important date, maybe something to put in your calendar. Is uh, February 9th. February 9th is uh, the Activision, you know, yearly call, like to all their, uh, you know, stockholders and such. And uh, I think that might be important for the future. I would love yeah, to hear yeah. that we get Destiny 2 news. Well, even if it's just like, and uh, Destiny's got a thing coming in this year. Blah, 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 blah. You it's know it's I mean? kind of interesting. I think that's kind of where we started hearing about the shift from you know, $20 expansions to live events, that kind of thing. And it was all vague at that point. We didn't really know what that meant, but it definitely indicates, you know, that there's, there, there's a plan laid out in the future. And I think it's nice for people to just sort of to hear that and go, Ooh, what could that mean? I always, I always like hearing about that. One of the biggest things about that uh, in general is the fact that once they're the parent company is able to release something like that, they can talk about it and they can be more open about Mm -hmm. it. And right. they can start hyping it up, which is one of the best parts of being in this community and being a part of this game is the hype leading up to something new, leading up to even if it's oh. like patch notes, like getting patch notes is like one of the best feelings. <laughs> I remember the tear that came to my eye when I saw the Vidoc saying private matches mm-hmm. from Gamescom. And then it was just Irk saying private matches. And I was li- watching it on mute at my desk. Work had just started. I w- should not have been watching that. And I just see those two words and like literally a tear forms. And I'm just like, I don't know what to do. I was so happy. I'm looking forward to another feeling like that. Well, we got something in the near future to start feeling hype. We do have a new live stream coming. And this one sounds a little bit different. In Deej's words, I told Josh to save his powder for a stream chat complete with a math class and a shooting gallery. We'll show you what we have in mind as part of a live fire exercise. A math class and a shooting gallery. Like, 
Sounds like Fallout <laughs> plays. Hmm. Yeah, right. You, and last week, did you mention something about graphs? Oh, oh, you gotta. I love those, those graphs. graphs. Like I, maybe that didn't appeal to everyone else as much as it did to me. But oh man, please teach me math, DJ. Birds, Birds is a graph guy. I would love for this this stream to just kind of be like debunking some of the like, kind of just like being like, all right, well, this is where you should be for this. Like DJ says, guys, it's finally uh, the truth is out. Uh, everyone has been theorizing. They've been guessing. Everyone has their own concepts of what is correct. Uh, it is true. If you teabag a control point, it <laughs> will count faster. <laughs> Poor fall. <laughs> bungee confirmed. Oh, that's just like the bungee version of dick butt or send nudes. Um, <laughs> there was actually uh, one other uh, uh, little teaser in, in here, a little bit of an Easter egg. Um, if you pay attention, you actually learned that Deej himself is going to be putting on his special pants <laughs> to uh, come Sparrow Race. His momentum pants. The Crucible Radio <laughs> Boys. Um, I assume those are like a Paisley stripe as well in Deej Shader version. He's, of course, talking about the Kells Angel Classic. Ooh. Crucible Radio's very first tournament. We're going to be Sparrow Racing, boys. Yes, so this Kells Angels Classic, what you should do is go sign up and race it yourself because there's a chance at actual cash prizes at Control Freaks t-shirts. So yes, definitely do that. But also, if you want to tune in and watch, I will be shoutcasting the tournament yeah. from the Crucible Radio Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Crucible Radio. It's going to be hype. Like I feel like... I like shoutcasting the tournaments, but I like the the strategy involved in that. And like, it's very interesting. The triple wreck is using this, blah, blah, blah. This one is just going to be me like, like oh, hey, no! he's in the first place. He's coming around the corner and he's going <laughs> over the jump. And he's, oh, he passed on his way. Like, hopefully no. I can keep that up for like however long this goes. It will go for 10 rounds. A uh, lot of races for each racers. It's going oh, to come down to the wire. I have a feeling and it's going to look great on Twitch. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm, and, and if you are interested in, uh, competing against me, uh, Swing Slash, uh, I will be in there as well, as well as a couple other big names. Uh, obviously, we mentioned Deej, uh, but Dr. Lupo, Ninja, Ignite, those guys are going to be in there. We're currently uh, talking to a few other people to try and get them in. So there's a very good chance that you may be playing one of your favorite streamers, uh, one of your favorite Destiny personalities, and uh, me. <laughs> oh yeah, yep. <laughs> and you can tell you can tell them that they're like you can just be like I don't care what podcast you're on, I don't care how good you are at Crucible. I smoked you on the racetrack, and that's where real wars are won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can make a whole Reddit post about it too. Deech has been talking. Oh some my god, mad game <laughs> on the Twitter. He is taking no he prisoners. Does, he takes. SRL very seriously. <laughs> yes, he does. He's like, I just like playing Rift. I like being the the guy who drives the Warthog in Halo, but I'll fucking kill you on the race course. <laughs> Swain, you mentioned some of those streamers. We got a couple. We got a couple other names in here. Who uh, who do you think we should mention? Um, Mister uh, Mister Pope Bear from Destiny Community Podcast is uh, is going to be joining us. Um, mm, Pope, can't wait to beat him. <laughs> we have um I don't feel like I don't feel like I should announce this one uh because he's the king. But if you uh, appreciate fine sparrow racing, um y- you're going to enjoy this one. We're going to have a list of all of the different Twitch feeds you can watch from direct in addition to Bonesy's commentary. We've got a ton mm-hmm. of streamer coverage. There's going to be so many hype chats and um I'm really happy with the format that we came up with. As Bonesy said, it's 10 rounds. And for the first three rounds, those are just qualifiers. It's going to be groups of six. And all you have to do is not come in last. If you can just stay out of last place, you're going to make it through each of the three qualifying rounds and uh, onto the elimination and beyond. So if you can manage to place in the top one, top two, top three, you got a shot at making it to the semifinals on this thing. So uh, yeah, yeah. Stay tuned. It's a very reasonable $5 entry fee. And of course, all of the entry fees go directly into the prize pool. We're not making any money from this. We just want to throw an awesome tournament. So go to crucibleradio.com slash SRL. Signups there, rules there. Any questions, you just let us know. Any questions? <laughs> so many questions. <laughs> 
Uh, Swain, you you gotta you gotta beat Pope though, because uh, this is coming out after the podcast showdown, and uh, I'm just gonna assume GGs to the Destiny Community Pod. I have no idea what the outcome will be, but if I'm looking licking my wounds. By the time this race starts, you have to get revenge against Pope for me. So don't fail me. I've got to also uh, get revenge for birds here as well, because uh, I'm still feeling it from last year. (laughs) The wounds are still fresh. Avenge me, Swain. (laughs) Well, uh, guys, I think we have a sponsor for this week's podcast. I know birds is really excited. about. I'm so excited for this one. Guys, Valentine's Day is coming up. It's coming up. Swain, you, you got a big plan, right? <laughs> yeah. Like you're I really hear gonna... there's a little Swain along the way. <laughs> <sighs> I am going to be honest. I've got no plan. I've got n- no ideas. I assumed I was going to come up with something at the last second, but then... Burr's just assumed he'd be traveling. <laughs> yeah, right. It's... <laughs> Actually, it's not an unreasonable assumption. It actually almost happened, but I got to get my gift mind in gear and come up with something. But like, look, you can't give flowers... Yeah, you, you know you can, but that's that's not enough. Well, you die. Just like a couple roses, you got to be original. You got to give something that is not just ooh, that's nice, but something that you're gonna you're gonna enjoy. You can enjoy together, and that is guaranteed to be a success. You got to give them an unforgettable gift uh, that's as unique as they are. And trust me, this is a unique one. And that's why you can count on the experts at Sherry's Berries to help you find the perfect gift. It's berries, guys. You're going to give them some berries. It's freshly dipped strawberries. And they start at just $19.99 plus shipping. Or double the berries for just $10 more. And I mean, go online. Go to berries.com and look at these things. They will make you salivate as soon as you see them. I'm I'm ordering some for myself. I'm going to be alone. I'm going to be eating them. On the couch. They're <laughs> incredible. I I gotta say I've like blown it with some Valentine's Day gifts before and gotten <laughs> some. Oh, thanks. Oh, that's so nice. Wow, wow. you really or, shouldn't have birds. Or just like, oh boy, I, you forgot. I, yeah, I guess we can do <laughs> we can do next time. But look, Crucible Radio listeners, this year you are going to be a success. You are not going to repeat my mistakes. I know for sure this is what Mrs. Birds is getting because she's a good eater. And you can't go wrong. These are incredible berries. These are strawberries at their best. You don't even have to water them. No, you don't have to go pick them out. You don't have to you don't have to find the good ones. These are giant flavorful juicy strawberries and they're covered in chocolatey goodness white chocolate milk chocolate dark chocolate chocolate chips swirls nuts all that everyone's got their own particular preference when it comes to this kind of thing you can find the perfect berry for your beloved one i honestly hope she gets me berries too but not the same kind i'm gonna get her because we like different things out of our berries and look you're not going to be running around to stores trying to find something in stock rushing to wrap it You just go to their website, you pick out a gift from their incredible selection of gifts. It's going to come in a gift box. It's going to be perfectly packaged. All the details are taken care of. It's going to get there on time. It's going to be fresh. All this is guaranteed or your money back. So uh, with Valentine's Day fast approaching, uh, there's only one way to get Sherry's Berries starting at $19.99. Just visit berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. Click on the microphone in the top right-hand corner and type in BBS. That's berries.com and use our code BBS and uh, help support our show by supporting our sponsors. Use code BBS. I'm literally just salivating right now. Okay. Mm, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Well, this this patch is coming. We are very excited. I think we have rehashed all the philosophical points we could have at this point. Uh, really looking forward to it. But in the meantime, as always, we like answering listener questions. We've got some cues from our patrons over there at uh, patreon.com slash crucible radio. And we got a couple on Twitter as well. So uh, should we dive into these? Yeah, I mean, well, sure. Let's do it. Well, Swain's not on board. I am super on board. I mean, I'm totally on board. There is plenty of Swain related questions. On the Twitter. (laughs) That's actually my favorite kind of question, too. Okay, so I actually got a a really interesting one right off the bat uh, from from Michael G. on Patreon. And he says he got this from watching Ninja and Dr. Lupo. So he says, what do you think about calling out actual HP numbers instead of the glorious one-shot or absolute? 
So let's say they have half health and it's 50, half shield is 150, blah, blah, blah. I found that very interesting as it packs so much more information into just one word or number. That, you know what, that's a just a, that's just a fantastic suggestion. I don't even know if that's a question. I 100% wholeheartedly agree that if you can get in the habit of responding with numbers, how much you've done, and if you're really that smart in the moment, the math of how much they have left, then you're providing your teammates with that much more uh, specific information without without saying much more. I'm, I'm just imagining me on Twilight Gap as a meme and the numbers and like fractions and stuff over top of me as I go like look back and forth. <laughs> when when your when your teammate calls out that he did damage up for 125 and you can't remember if they're a max armor titan or not. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, oh no. Yeah. What? But, See, but jokes aside, I mean, that's like literally it though. It's like you can say, oh, I hit him with a grenade and maybe they just know. I'm usually pretty good at like, 170 I can, I can be like that's 170 that's probably the only numbered yeah. call out i can do um and that's usually based off of you know uh incendiaries if you get a good hit on them they usually hit for that right 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 but you know it's it's the difference between coming around a corner and then someone said they were absolute and you're like well okay that should mean <laughs> i just tap them but it turns out they're they had most of their health and their shield is just starting to come back so your first primary fire doesn't do the job and then suddenly there's a shotgun in your face uh, so yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I fully, fully support. If you can start saying how much damage you did, I mean, you can even be a, a lot more efficient with your callouts. Less, less chatter, less. Uh, oh, yeah, he's so weak. Oh my god, just go get. He's absolute, and just say one fifty. Then there you go. Oh my god, enchiladas are better than pizza, and I don't agree with this one. I what? think, uh, I think the spirit of it is in the right place, which is that. You want a call out to be informative and you want to give a call out to enable your opponent or to enable your teammate to know what they should be doing. And I think in that regard, it's great. But I think business of calling out specific numbers, especially when you're, you know, you don't get to see a number above your opponent's head is just too much to be doing reliably and consistently in the moment. I think your goal when you're making a call out there should be to really tell your opponent what they need to know, which is how much risk should they be taking on to finish this kill? Did you did you just graze them and they're going up against a, a you know almost healthy opponent? Did you get rid of their shield? Are they a tiny you know sliver left? I do agree that you know the term absolute is used way too much when people aren't absolute. But the fact that we don't play this game with HP bars with perfect numbers written above them, the armor levels change everything, and that recovery changes everything too, that instead of spending that extra split second to go 25, 24, 24, 24, he must be uh, 90 <laughs> HP, it's much better to just say in the moment, his shield's down, or you know, absolute, or tagged him, because that that little bit of speed you gain on getting that information out is going to give your teammates better time to make a decision before their shield kicks in and, and they're back up. Okay, that's a good argument. I think you're just being feisty with the enchilada thing, but uh, it's a no, very look, good point. Well, if- when you reach a certain age, you're going to discover that a healthy, wholesome enchilada is just better than most pizza. Healthy I'm going to enchilada. discover that Old Birds is living a sad life with no pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a life lousy with enchiladas. <laughs> Yeah, but the, I think the best you guys you got made, it wrong. You you live out in LA. There's no good pizza out there, <laughs> dude. I am paying real money to have Chicago ship me a frozen deep dish. Or else Hello, I might mayor of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> it's an emergency. What do you mean? I've called too many times. <laughs> uh, but you know, the thing you mentioned. The thing you mentioned was you know we say absolute too much. So. I think there are good practices to stop doing that. Yes. If you are in a habit of saying like, absolute, it's like, no, you, you kind of whiffed a shotgun blast and he's got most of his health. Uh, it's not quite the same thing. So yeah, maybe we can find a common ground to say that let's not use absolute too often. And one shot is vague because every gun in destiny does a different amount of damage in one shot. Next question. Uh, we've actually got a pair of Swain based questions and I am <laughs> happy to indulge these. Of course. Uh, Fawaz asks shampoo the beard 
And Slick Mickers Gaming also asks, what's the longest you've grown out your beard? I've had a yeard once. Yard? Yard? A beard once, but had to trim for work. Had to trim for work. A yard is a, be- a year-long beard, right? I guess, yeah. Right? Is it a year-long beard or a yard-long beard? Year-long? That's I think question. you said it's the longest you've grown it out. I feel like that's two questions. For a yard. It's a series of beard-related questions, Swain. <laughs> I want I mean, to know about your beard. How often do you shampoo it, and what's the longest it's ever been? Uh, whenever, well, I, don't, I shave my head, so I, I barely ever really need shampoo anymore. So every once in a while I will, but for the most part, body wash is what I use yeah, beard's for my different. beard. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the longest, I mean, I've been just, I don't know, I, I stopped really shaving a long time ago. And it just kind of <laughs> happens. Whenever I get my hair cut, I kind of trim it. Mostly in mustache so I can like eat <laughs> without things getting in it. The first time. Okay. So the, obviously these were questions were not for me, but I'm working on a beard and it's not the worst. Um, <laughs> but the first time I ate something and then had hot sauce in it and like oh, half boy. an hour later, like licked my lip, I guess. And, and there was hot was sauce hot on it. And I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> like freaked me out. And I was so un- unexperienced with that scenario that it kind of scared me. I was like, this isn't worth it. You never realize how badly you need napkins for everything until you have facial hair. I'm slowly finding that out. It's like always have napkins after every single bite. Just napkins. <laughs> just, just napkins. Napkins. Always napkins. <laughs> every always single napkins. Bite. That's why I like being alone when I eat like messy stuff. So I don't have to. I think I win the award for person who, if you see me after a week, you think, oh, he grow a beard. But then you see me after two months, you're like, nah, he can't grow a beard. <laughs> Falls apart so quickly. All right. Next question. Next series of beard related questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, there's, a, there's a destiny one here I like. This is from uh, Cameron Rice on Twitter. And he says, are there any maps that you used to love? And have grown to hate Ooh. or vice versa that you once didn't like and now That's you like. Interesting question. Maps. Definitely. Mm. Um, I used to love Asylum. I don't need to play Asylum anymore. <laughs> I used to hate Anomaly. I love Anomaly. <laughs> so I would say that I used to like Drifter simply because it came out as a new map. And I was like, ooh, new map. Uh, and then I vehemently hate Drifter so much. It's like the worst map ever. Orbs fly, orbs fly away, and <laughs> playing supremacy, and you're your just like leaping out into the sky. Special box kind of floats off to the the, the side. I don't. Uh, why? No, don't do those. I just think it's too small. And also, like it's just like you're in lanes the entire time. It sucks. Yeah, that's it. I think that's what changed with Asylum was realizing that, like, yeah, okay, it's a small map, but the fifty fifties are so dominant, and they're just like. They're so attractive to do by default. Just like every single Asylum pubs matches is just like people running to B. And B is such a strong point. It's that lack of variety, despite there being a lot of interesting engagements. And I think that's actually what I started to like about Anomaly is that there really is no definitive engagement. Like, yeah, you do get that initial 50-50, but... Yeah, it's proven to be a map with a lot of depth, despite also not being a particularly huge map. I would also say I used to hate Shores of Time. This is a long time ago. I used to dislike this map simply because of the setup on Shores of Time. Always just felt way too powerful, way too you know unable to overcome. The uh, sea boats? Yeah, sea boats, just kind of locking it down. But getting a different perspective on the map and different places to hang out and uh, ninja spots on the map and just kind of like finding your way around and even playing trials on it. Playing trials on it was one of my favorite weekends of uh, trials playing short as a time. I don't think I've flipped on any maps. I think over time I've only just grown stronger in my hate or love for the map. <laughs> <laughs> like I disliked dungeons when it came out and throughout year two and now when I see it I'm just like I don't even want to be here like I like I don't leave the game but I just like assume it's gonna go bad 
Um, and I still love Rusted, which is my first favorite map. But Bo- let me do a alpha. let me do a love hate lightning round with you. I'm gonna call out a bunch of maps, and you tell me if you fucking love them or you fucking hate them. <laughs> okay, I think there's probably more love than hate, but I'll I'll do it. Okay, Firebase Delphi. Uh, meh. Well, this is disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a meh on some of them. Blind Watch. Ugh. No hate. Twilight Gap. Love. Uh, Pantheon, love. Timekeeper, love. Ooh, yeah, Timekeeper. Good answer. <laughs> uh, Widow's Court. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of falling off on that one. I think I kind of dislike it now. Uh, Black Shield. More dislike. I used to really love it. Maybe that's like the one flip I've. <laughs> I ever feel had. like I'm trying to like pick the ones that are your flip flops. Uh, here's an easy one. Cauldron. Love. Fucking love it. Uh, Cauldron cast, baby, come in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> is 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 that the official canon date for when Cauldron Cast is arriving? Or <laughs> yes, so is that sometime this N year. Plus one? Okay, it's also the dumbest and longest recurring joke on this show. <laughs> that is true. Staying power. The Seattle joke might be longer. I think Cauldron, Cauldron was Cast was episode, episode three. Two? two. Yeah, I think it was two. Two it or was three. Really old. Yeah. Um, I, you know what I was going to say about this question though is that I've started to really really like. Uh, some of the more common tourney maps and many of the tournaments, they'll just pick five and you'll say, do this so that you're not spending the whole time. Like, well, what, what, what do we play on? Um, but Asylum, Anomaly, Shrine, Rusted, and I Hack on think, Precipice. You know, <laughs> and Hack on Precipice, yes. Uh, but th- those maps that get played in tourneys, uh, I've started to like, and it's because I've played Sweats with competitive rules on those maps. And like, they just feel you good. Know, uh, yeah, Asylum and Trials. I used to just f- fucking lose my mind. Fours on Cauldron. Oh man, that's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I, Cauldron is another another one. That's why I, I, it just kind of breathes a fun new life into them. And I just love Twilight Gap. I think that's a great map. Great questions, great questions. But you know, there's more that have been asked, and we are gonna go answer them on the exclusive bonus. Uh, real world crucible radio <laughs> podcast uh, that can only be, be heard on our on our patreon so if you want to hear us answer other questions like has anyone really been far as decided to use even go want to do more look like <laughs> then head on over <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for asking all the questions that you've that you've asked over the years of uh, of crucible radio it's one of our favorite segments well preparing for all of our stuff coming up some interesting places to go places to hit subscribe, places to hit follow, all of that. Hit that like button, smash that sub like scribe so button. smash to the like scribe. Uh, head on over to our YouTube, YouTube Crucible Radio. Uh, check, you might have to scroll. We have a lot of Planet Destiny ones on there. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of pop up first, but Crucible Radio, follow us on there. Hit that subscribe button. Twitch.tv slash Crucible Radio. That's where you'll find the SRL coverage. Vroom, vroom. Up, you can listen to Bones, Shoutcast, some yeah, stuff. Yeah, hopefully there's still some slots to sign up by the time this episode comes out. Yeah, check it out. Uh, CrucibleRadio.com slash SRL. All S-R-L. great things. SRL. Cade's got a lot of money riding on this. <laughs> glimmer. <laughs> it's glimmer. It's glimmer. Anyway. Cade's got a lot of dollars riding on this. <laughs> okay, and then also check out the internet uh, on your browser to check out Old School, the podcast where the three of us discuss games that only come out on your computer when you buy it from the store. Uh, you can't download them or play them, and there's no DLC. It's just pinball and card games. Subtitled, definitely a real podcast that exists. <laughs> you just got to find it. Spinoff podcast of that one is just messing around with the shapes in MS Paint and creating a bunch of circles. <laughs> Drawing a bunch of squiggles and then coloring in all the, the ones that parts, connect yeah. on the corners. <laughs> yeah, and creating the S with the, the three lines. And then you oh, make people didn't know S. that we were artsy. There you go. Love that S. And this, like I said, that's on the internet. Go search. Bye. Love you guys. See ya. See ya. Music this week coming to you from Gravzal. Check them out. That's G R A V Z A H L dot bandcamp.com straight from Berlin, Germany. 
And of course, if you're a musician, we want to hear some music. We love getting emails. Send us something. It's crucibleradio at gmail.com. <laughs>